Hello, footy fans, and welcome back to the Chip and Chase podcast. It's a Wednesday, so you know what that means. We've got our NRL Supercoach wrap-up coming up right now, going through everything that happened in round three of the season from a Supercoach perspective, and of course, going to give our previews and everything that I'm doing, all the advice that I can give to you guys for the upcoming round four, all from the Supercoach perspective. So we won't waste too much longer on this. Once again, this is going to be a video format. So if you're listening on any audio platforms, so your Spotify, your Apple Music, if you want to see myself, if you want to see what I'm recording, my Supercoach screen, everything like that, head over to the YouTube channel. That's the best way to see that. If you are joining in from the YouTube channel here, and if you don't know, I do have the other, I'm up on all streaming platforms. You can go give them a look, just interact with me more there. And once again, I'll plug the Instagram, just another way for you guys to see content that I'm not going to release directly to the podcasts. And it's just a more a better way of engaging with me. If you want to ask trade advice, if you want to speak to me, that's the best place to do that. So the Instagram for that is at Chip and Chase Podcast. But we won't waste any further time on this. We'll get straight into this video. As you can see up on the screen, if you are watching on the YouTube, you can see how I went for round three. I scored 1,065, ranked in the top 15%. Not a bad score. I'm I'm very fine with that. I know there were people in the twelve hundreds and thirteen hundreds. Like it's it's the scoring is slowly going up, but you never really know what what's happening week in week out. And I'm happy with the one thousand and sixty five here. So I went up 18,349 places overall in the season rank, up into 23,613th overall, which I'm more than happy with. You know, it's just that steady climb that, yeah, you have to get going. There's things that went my way. There's a few things that didn't go my way, but that's the nature of Supercoach. So we'll, we'll get straight into that. But, yeah, very happy with how we are tracking along so far this season. But we'll go into how the team shaped up. So you can see here... Just how it all ended up, you can see a, a certain captain option there, which, you know, maybe means something else happened. But we'll just go through the rest of my team, try and make this a bit short and snappy, how they all performed. So as you know, last week I brought in Joey Lussick. I ended up trading out Danny Levi. I was tossing and turning between uh, whether doing Levi and getting a, a few more cash rises out of him or getting rid of Brennan Smith, who was sort of, yeah, as you can see, averaged 44. Hasn't been all that great. But I've just got I've got an inkling about Smith. I've got that gut feel. And if he stays around that four hundred and fifty, four hundred and sixty thousand dollar mark, he's not a hard trade out target. I can upgrade him quite easily. So I've kept him in the squad for now. Ended up playing Joey Lussick, but Brandon Smith got the reserve. Regardless, Joey Lussick, thirty seven. Lowest score of the season, of course, it's the score that I get, the score. I'd known him for his first two. I bring him in for the price rise, which I'm more than happy for the price rise. Went up a fair bit of cash to Joey Lussick. How much did he actually go up? Just under $61,000. So very good cash rise there. He's still got a few more in him, does Joey Lussick. But 37, not the best score to play with. Then again, that's what Brandon Smith scored me last week. Regardless, uh, probably not going to be a play option from now on. I thought he might have kept getting those attacking stats. And I thought, you know, maybe he'd increase his base in an 80-minute roll. Keep in mind, that 37 is all base, which isn't it isn't fantastic for a base of a hooker. But, hey, if that's his floor, it's, it's not awful, I suppose. Regardless, 37 from Lussick. It's the price rise that I'm mainly happy with. On my bench, Brandon Smith, I ended up playing him as a reserve. I just had a feeling about him. He played well. He looked good. Only got a 47. He's very much passing the eye test in the NRL, which we know. Brandon Smith is a, is a fabulous player. But those the way he's playing in the NRL isn't necessarily translating to super coach scores, unfortunately. I'm going to keep him around for a little bit longer. I'm not quite sure who to go to from here. You know, everybody's going to Appy. I can't really do that, especially with, you know, the injury crisis that we will get to. This is going to be a very, very tough old week for super coaches. So we'll get into that. But yeah, 47 from Brandon Smith, ended up playing him. It, it is what it is. We move on from that. In the front row, however, we move on to Terrell May. He scored a 44 in this one. Didn't the, the Rabbitohs seem to contain him pretty well. It was probably like one of the only players that the Rabbitohs actually contained. They struggled with it, just about everyone else. 44 is still not awful considering how shit the, the front row position is at the moment. Um, but, yeah, definitely not the best from Terrell May, but, hey, it is what it is. He looks to be probably playing a few more minutes now. Lindsay Collins is down injured, so we'll get into that in a bit bit more. But definitely 
just going to keep sit him into that position. I think everyone should and just let him roll. He'll, he'll keep scoring bigger ones from here on out, I'd assume. Um, my other playing front row forward this time was Pawasa Farmasili, who, of course, didn't actually play. I ended up putting the VC on Nathan Cleary. So to loop the 121 from Cleary, I captained Farmasili. So I sat to Tola for this one. And it ended up being a good choice. Totola only scored 39. I think he had about 49, 48. Updates killed him. Even then, 48, 49, not great points. Um, another one of those players that, I don't know, there's no real front row options. I could downgrade him to Liam Henry, free up a lot of money. Liam Henry's scoring like 1.3 more than Totola is anyway, like he's averaging more than Totola and he's substantially cheaper. But once again, with the injuries that are happening, it's a luxury trade, something I can't do. I'm happy to sort of sit to Toller and May in my front row and let them knock out bloody 40s, 50s. I don't care really. Um, it's, a, it's an ugly position. But if they stay around that sort of 400, well, May should keep going up. But if Toller sits around that 400, 450 price range, sort of like the Brandon Smith mold, then they're not too hard to move on in the future while someone like you know, Sam Hughes, he made his money, but not much. Averaging 27.7, only scored 23 on the weekend. It's not much point scoring coming from him. Doesn't look like much money making to be had. The Bulldogs just are only using him in a 20, 25-minute role, which I expected they'd use a lot more out of him. Um, it's not the case. Regardless, he's a hold, I suppose. You can't really move him on to many other players. You could go to Liam Henry if you can, but who knows how long Liam Henry is going to keep this performance up. I don't know. Regardless, front row, it's, a, it's still a tough position. But yeah, Pawaso ended up in my starting side. I used him as the VC loop, so he got the captain nod. you got to respect that if he does nothing else for me this season. If I trade him out now, he's, he's done his job. He was a loop option for me. Moving into the second rows, Josh Curran, 52. He upgraded decently. I'm happy with 50s at the moment. All of these mid-range second rows are crap. They're, they've all been shit. Not a single one has actually kicked on like we hoped. We'd hope, you know, one or two would. None of them have. Billy Army kick out probably scored pretty good this week, but he's sort of fluctuating. He definitely doesn't have that base. Curran has been the best of them, you know, averaging 60 there. 52 is the week that I bring him in. It's his lowest score of the season. Just my luck, but I'm fine with that for now, especially if he does get that duel and I can move him into front row later. As I said, 50s and 60s in front row might be a blessing. So I'm fine with the 52. Both are more 53. Pretty happy with that. We know that the Titans got absolutely decimated. They, they, they look awful. I'm very worried for them. He's going to be a trade out option. Definitely uh, not this week, just with the injuries, but, yeah, he's not going to get attacking stats while it looks of things in that side, especially with David Fafita not far away. Um, but, yeah, 53 purely in base. I'm fine with that. And Piacora got some junk time points. He got a line break right at the end of the game. Uh, I think he technically got a try assist too because he ended up passing it to Jesse Arthurs who went over, which is also good because I own Arthurs. But, yeah, 57 from him. He was looking for a pretty poor score in this one before that. And now he's out for... Four weeks, I think it is, with an ankle injury. So he's looming to be one of my cells this week, but we will get into my trades later on. In terms of the bench, Morgan Smithies, he's slowed down a bit. 38 this one. He didn't play the full 80. I think he played about 65 this week. A bit less than usual. That's expected now that Whitehead's back. It's important to note we will get into the uh, team lists, but Corey Horsburgh once again named in reserve grade. So that's, that's good for Smithies, but who knows how much longer his um price rises are expected to go look at that break even of 24 expected score of 44 expected price range of, of 17k so we could get him up to 400k and then he might just be a sell that's could be his peak which isn't that much how much did we make out of him yeah 38 39k so we might make close to 60 and that's all we get but honestly that's fine i played him first week for his first score I haven't played him since um yeah We'll look to move him on later, but not right now. Joe Chan ended up being a late withdrawal with a hand injury. So obviously no no points there, no money to be made at the moment. Stormer on the buy now. So we'll, you know, got a fair bit of time till we see him back and what happens there. But for now, just sit him if you've still got him and, and wait for him to make money in the future. Viliami Fafida came on and stuffed up my um, loop. Massive nine was my AE this week. 
you get that. Yeah, that's the trouble with looping and troubles with players like Fafida. He's going to loom to be one of my cells in a week or two. Uh, moving into the halfbacks, here you can see where I doubled my points. I end up changing everything last week. I think I, I went into last week, I went into this podcast saying Hines was the clear option as a uh, captain once again versus the Tigers. I just got cold feet. There was something right, but literally two minutes before the game, I'm like, shit, I'm worried. And I switched it. I switched everything, put Hines onto the bench, put the VC onto Cleary. Sorry, two minutes before the um, the Panthers game, by the way, not the Sharkies game. I just had a feeling about Cleary and got scared of Hines. So I put the VC on Cleary, captain on, uh, might have been Tedesco. It was Tedesco at the time. Anyway, stuff stuff happens. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, 121 from Cleary was very happy with that. Ended up looping that, uh, Heinz of course scored 53, not his best. He's actually lucky he scored 53. He had that line break assist to Sione Katoa. And I think that might've been his only attacking stat in terms of an NRL perspective was one of the poorest games I've ever seen him play. So 53 is not even bad for, for how he actually was that game. He did just lose about 120,000. Uh, how much did we lose? Doesn't actually say. Oh yeah, hundred eight thousand. Okay, I was a bit bit too much on him. Um, still got a break even of one hundred and twenty one. So people are probably gonna. Well, people would be looking to sell if it wasn't for the other stuff that's happening. Anyway, uh, five eight still Brown at fifty five. He looks good in this game, but again, more so from an NRL perspective. Fifty five still very much fine. Not too many attacking stats in that. It's just the sort of floor that Dylan Brown has. So I'm happy with that. Uh, Ethan Strange back down to earth of the 29. It's fine. He's still going to make money. What's the break even at minus nine still. So he's going to make money. He's already made almost 42 K. We just keep him going, keep making that cash from him. That's all we can ask in the center wing department. Roger to a He ended up with a 79 played the second half at fullback. When Tane to succumbed, 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 succumbed. Yeah, that's probably the word. When Tane Tulpiki succumbed to a um, head knock, so he left the field and Roger was moved back to fullback. Ended up scoring his first try of the season. A nice score of 79 there. Uh, Jesse Ramian, 32 against the Tigers. We know what the Sharks pulled out and it was essentially nothing. So 32, yeah. It's, it's, it's a shame. Again, that's all base essentially, which I'm I'm fine with. That's good base. But I was hope the whole reason I bought Ramian for these opening rounds was to get good scores against these weaker opposition. And so far he's gone like 60s, 60s, and then 32. So not the best. He hasn't been my best pod. I'm probably going to hold him for a fair while longer though. I just believe in him and I think he'll come good. Uh, rest of the team, Taylor May, 30 points. The Panthers just did not go to the left. He also left the field with a HIA after the um, head clash with Nathan Cleary. So it was 15 minutes that he wasn't on the field. Uh, but yeah, they just didn't go his way. They attacked the other edge with um, to uh, with Tungo and Taruva because they were up against that second row matchup. So not too much bore. 30 in base, happy with that. Ben Trebojevic, he's getting a bit tough now. So he went 33 last week, which I was fine with because he moved into the centers. He went 19 this week. Again, I think he found himself in the centers. I can't remember. He also didn't play the full 80 this week. He ended up playing about 60. Corey Waddell came on. So not sure what to do with him. He's still honestly maybe a playable option this week against the Dragons. Um, but I'm not sure how long his um, money-raising credentials are still around. 19 was not a good score for my round, but you move on. On the bench, didn't play Jesse Arthurs, but he punched out a 45 with another try. He's not scoring the best, but like it's fine to make money. I'll probably get one more price rise. Uh, actually, what's his? I could, yeah, I'll get one more price rise out of him and I might look to move him on next week. You'll get to those trades, you know, next week. We'll focus on these ones for now. Taintor Picky, he's out this week. As I said, he got that concussion. So he is under the 11 day stand down policy now, misses this week, and then Charles is expected to be back the week after. So he looms as a bit of a sell, which is disappointing. We're hoping to make a bit more money out of him. Still has a break even of eight. Would have made even more cash if he didn't get the concussion. It's a shame. He looks good, but it's the reality of it. I think I'll sell him. Uh, Jack Bostock obviously didn't play. Dolphins had the buy. I'll probably look to play him this week. And then the fullbacks, Callum Ponga, who I kept, 86. Not bad at all. Very happy with that. And James Tedesco, the 135. 
Uh, he downgraded from about 145 as well, so that was a shame. But he was who I had my captain on before I um, looped to Cleary and then I put Ponger in. I don't know. Regardless, it's not a big of a deal. If I kept Tedesco, I would have missed that. As the captain, I would have missed out on this crappy Viliami for feet and nine. I would have got the Totola score instead and I would have doubled that. So it would have been a much better week. But you live with that. You can't complain with a doubled 121. But that's how my team uh, shaped up for round three. Again, pretty happy with the score. But uh, we will – oh, excuse me. Going to sneeze. We will look to uh, move on to the next segment, which, of course, is just going through the Teamless Tuesday news. Once again, I'll plug the Instagram. I'm doing more segments on there where I just run through this Teamless news. So if you are following me on the Instagram and you've seen all that, you can skip ahead on this. It's probably not too important. Uh, but if, you, if you're not following the Instagram and you want to know the news, that is pretty important for Supercoach. We'll get through that. So the first game of round four is the Roosters taking on the Penrith Panthers. Lots of ins and outs here. Luke Keery returns from concussion at 5'8". Send on Smith, who played bloody well in week three. He drops out of the squad completely. He's got a injury. I can't remember exactly what sort of injury, but he is out. Uh, Lindsay Collins is out with a hamstring injury. Egan Butch is added to the bench. But as I said, this is where Terrell May could be a big winner. He starts a prop in this one, and I'd expect big minutes out of him. So it could be really good for Terrell May owners, which I assume is a lot of us at this point. Let's have a quick look at his ownership. 39% of teams. So, yeah, pr- could be good for us. Uh, for the Panthers, of course, the big, big news, Nathan Cleary is out for up to four weeks with a hamstring injury. So Brad Schneider replaces him at halfback. This is where everything gets a bit bit ugly. Uh Cleary, I was going to hold because I'm not sure how long he will be out. And also, there are no good halfback options. Like, Hines and Cleary are the premium premium. They haven't been that great. Your next two best from last year were like Cherry Evans and Johnson, who are also doing not great. And they're still dropping cash. I don't know where you go to from here, uh, but we'll get into those trade options later on. But regardless, Cleary out for probably four weeks. It's a tough little injury there. It's really hard to hold him if you do have Hines as well because next week Hines is on the bye. You're without both halfbacks. So it's a tough gig there. Sorry, my hair is not listening. I need a haircut. Um, regardless, clear out for four weeks. Scott Sorensen is the other one out for the Panthers. He's out with a knee injury. So Luke Garner comes on to the run-on side. And Maverick Guy, out, our, uh, the cheapie of a, a couple of trials ago, a couple of years ago, he looked bloody good and we're hoping to get him. He comes in to make his NRL debut. That's good for him. Really good stuff to see. Probably not too super coach relevant at the moment. Have to see how long Sorensen's out for. Have to see his minutes. There's a lot of, you know, things there that we have to look at. But good to see him come in just from an NRL standpoint. Moving on to the Rabbitohs Bulldogs game. The Rabbitohs have dropped Saliva Havili and Sean Kepi, uh, and they're replaced by Michael Cheekham and Shaq Mitchell on the bench. Really hard done by on Havili. Didn't have a great game last week, but the week before that, he was probably their best player. Um, and Sean Kepi, really tough for owners. If you picked Kepi as a starting front rower, just a cheapy sort of mid-ranger to start the season. Tough for you, but honestly, he's been playing Scoring pretty poorly anyway, so he was looming as a sell regardless. So I'd probably flick him on if there's no other issues in your side. Uh, and there's no changes for the doggies in this one. So the next game, of course, is the Broncos taking on the North Queensland Cowboys. Of course, the big news, Reese Walsh is out with that fractured cheekbone in that head clash with Taylor May uh, last week. So he's out for, I think it's looking to be four weeks for that one too. He's replaced by Tristan Saylor at fullback. Probably not too relevant there. Um, maybe, no, nah, I don't think so. Obviously you'd get three weeks to look at him and then we'll hear more about Walsh, but definitely, I don't think he's really relevant at the moment. Uh, Brandon Piacora, he's out for four weeks with an ankle injury. So he's replaced by Jaden Hunt at second row. Another one we'll get to, but probably looming as a sell there. Uh, Martin Tapao has been dropped from the bench and Corey Oates has been added onto the bench for the Broncos. Uh, now moving on to the Cowboys. Just the one change, Zach Labart returns in the centres. He was a late withdrawal last week, so Tom Chester drops out of this side. Not too much to note there, but for any Zach Labart owners, lucky. Good stuff for you. 
And the next game is the Dragons taking on the Manly Seagulls. In this one, there's a lot of changes for the Dragons. Jacob Little comes back at hooker. So he pushes Jesse Marski, last week's debutante, to the bench and Connor Mulheisen to the reserves. Uh, could be good for little owners, though I can't imagine there's too many of them floating around. Jack DeBellin has been dropped to the bench. Francis Molo returns from suspension, I believe it was, at prop. Jaden Suwa, who also was a late scratching last week, he's back at second row. Harm Sele comes onto the bench for his club debut. And the outs for the Dragons are Michael Molo, Ben Murdoch Masilla, and Viliami Fafita. Molo and Fafita, I think, are just uh, straight drop outs. And I think uh, Murdoch Masilla might be out injured. Regardless, they all would have been dropped. Um, just with the ins that were added for the Dragons. For the Seagulls, there are no changes. So lucky them, they've avoided this crisis. Into the Titans and Dolphins. Jaden Campbell, he's named to return at fullback for the Titans, his first game for the season. So Keanu Keeney, he drops out of the side. The big and terrible news out of this one, Tino Farsaw Malaawi, he has ruptured his ACL. So he will miss this season. It's heart-wrenching stuff. I've, I've talked about it on other podcasts. It's awful. I'm so upset about that. You never want to see it happen to any players, and then you get your star players and your captains like Tino is. It's 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 terrible stuff. My hair is doing wild stuff. Why can't it listen? Anyway, um, yeah, awful stuff for, for Tino. In terms of super coach, there's one less front row forward gun that we've got. Kenan Palacia uh, has been named to start at prop in his place. Could mean good things for him, but again, that's a wait and see. Uh, David Fafita has also been named to 18th man. I actually expect him to be a late inclusion in this one. Obviously, don't go early. Titans look like a basket case. I don't think David Fafita is going to change that all too much. So wait and see how that all goes. And for the Dolphins, just the one change. Ray Stone returns from his injury. So he's on the bench and Jared Wallace drops out. Onto the Knights and Warriors game. Well, Warriors and Knights game. Warriors are the home team. RTS, as we said, two of us check. He's named at fullback. Tain to a picky out with concussion. Adam Pompey, he comes into centre to plug that hole from uh, Tui Vasa Shek. Wade Egan, once again, has been named at hooker. It's Your guess is as good as mine if he's going to play. I thought he might have played last week by the sounds of everything coming out of camp. He obviously didn't. Maybe he's, he's more likely to for this game, but... Again, I don't think anybody should be owning Wade Egan at this point. Pick him up later if he, he goes good again. But if you have him, just get rid of him. Um, Dylan Walker, Murata Niakore, they return on the bench. So Tom Ale, Jazz Tavanga, and Chanel Harris-Tavita are the players who drop out of the side. For the Knights, Leo Thompson, he's suspended for two weeks with the run through on the kick chase that hit um, Ryan Pappenhausen. So two weeks suspension. Oh, my hair is doing my head in. Jesus Christ. Regardless, Leo Thompson out for two weeks. So Daniel Saifiti replaces him at starting prop. So he's partnering his brother in that side. And the big news is Dylan Lucas has been dropped from the bench in this one. So he's dropped back to the reserves, which means KPP. He played 80 last week anyway. He could be a bit of a lock now. I'm going to look to bring him in. I'm going to give it one more week. He's got a break even of about three or nine, which is you could, well, I would not begrudge anyone for bringing him in this week. But I'm going to wait one more week and see how he goes. Regardless, Sharks and Raiders in the next game. The changes here, the Sharks have been decimated in the forward pack. If you watched last week's game, you know three of their players got injured. So Dale Finucane, Royce Hunt, and Toby Rudolph, they all drop out due to injury. Jack Williams, who started at uh, second row last week, he moves back to the bench to be more of a middle cover now. See us if Italakai moves into the back row and Kale Eero comes in at centre to cover Talakai. Uh, the other names are Tom Hazelton moves into the starting side at prop. And the new faces on the bench are Tuku Hau Tapua and Daniel Atkinson. So they come onto the bench for the Sharkies. For the Raiders, James Schiller and Sebastian Chris, they come into the back line and Nick Kotrick and Albert Hopawate are out. Uh, important to note, Kotrick, I think, just has been dropped regardless. Uh, Hopawate is out because apparently he burnt himself doing some cooking. So... Don't look at Schiller and think he's too much of a cheapie. I don't think he'll be in the side for all too long unless he absolutely kills it. Uh, and then lastly, the last game of the round, Eels-Tigers. Mike Acevo, he returns on the wing for the Parramatta Eels. Morgan Harper moves to the centres. Big news is Mitchell Moses, he's out for eight weeks with an injury. Dill Brown is now named at halfback. And Blaze Talangi, last week's debutant, he goes into 5 eighth. 
obviously give it one more week, but hopefully we get a bit of game time for Talangi in the next few weeks and we can bring him in in our centre wing and be a bit of a cash cow there. And lastly for the Tigers, Alex Twiles out with concussion. He's replaced on the bench by Asu Kepoa. So that is all that we've got for the um, for the team lists. We will move into... Sorry, guys. Had a few issues there with the recording software. Obviously, you won't see that. I'll cut all that out. Um, but, yeah, we will move, we'll move into our trade talks here. So we'll start with what I'm going to do. There were a few options. I've gone back and forth a lot of times already. I really wanted to use this week as a week to just solidify my cheapies. So I wanted Liam Henry. I wanted Kai Pierce Paul. I wanted Lockie Galvin. And then next week was going to be mainly point chasing and working my team from there. It hasn't allowed me to really do that because of what's happened. I mean, I can do the KPP, Liam Henry and Galvin trade, but then I've got Cleary sitting on my bench still, which isn't a bad option. You know, I can keep Cleary for another week, sell him next week to maybe Jerome Hughes or something. But I'm not quite sure. I think what I wanted to do, and you guys can see that live now, I'm going to do a lot of trades here. I'm boosting this week. I didn't boost last week. I ended up reversing that Liam Henry trade. That's another thing I forgot to note. I did do that on the on the video last week. I ended up reversing that. I was like, do I need a boost for a front rower? No. So I reversed that. Was going to get him this week. I think I'm going to skip Liam Henry completely, which is a shame. I really wanted him. I Again, if anybody wants to bring him in, definitely not a bad shout. But Nathan Cleary has to go. I need to free up some money. In terms of total points, look at that. The second total point scorer for the uh, halfback position is Luke Brooks. I'm bringing him in. They've got the Dragons this week. He can score some points there, and he could potentially be my second 5 eighth option down the track when I move him down there. But he is my first trade. So Nathan Cleary to Luke Brooks. My second trade is Taintor Picky. As I said, he is out. I'm going to sub Ethan Strange down into that center wing. Po- Ooh, yep, into that center wing position. I'm going to bring in Lachlan Galvin to my 5'8". Look at that. Remaining cash, 511000 And then lastly, Brennan Piacora has to go. Let's, let's boost. Bang, bang, bang. Piacora out for four weeks. He has to go. I will now move Ben Trebojevic up into second row. I'm going to bring in Valentine Holmes. You can call it point chasing. Uh, what's his break even actually, Val? Val, 38. So you could wait another week. They've got the Broncos this week. Might not score amazingly, but I want to bring him in. They've got Titans the week after, and I want him for that game. So Val comes into my center wing. Trebojevic, I'm not going to play. Uh, yeah, I am. I don't want to play Morgan Smithies. Trebojevic can actually be a starting second rower for this week. There you go. Uh, Pawasa, you are not my captain, and you're not playing. Uh, let's do all these subs. So Brandon Smith will play over Joey Lusick. No, you know what? Don't worry about that stuff. We'll do that in a bit in the sit v start uh, talks. But in terms of the best trades this week, I think for any of you holding Cleary, you have to trade him, um, especially if you've got Hines, because next week you're going to be without both halfbacks, both halfback. Well, Hines has got the buy, and if you're holding Cleary who's injured, I'm not sure what you're going to do. So I think you have to uh, sell Cleary if you um, if you have him, unless you've got Cleary and Sam Walker or something like that. You can you can afford to live through that. Uh, a lot of people are blessed. I've been, I've been looking at the season, laughing at everybody who owns Drew Hutchison and saying, suck, Dean, I don't have him. I would love to own Drew Hutchison now because the best thing to do in this situation, you could do that whole move Cleary out and instead of getting a uh, halfback, because halfback is actually a pretty shit position this year, you can trade Cleary out. You move Hutchison up into your halfback position and you can bring in a gun center wing because center wing is one of those positions that is actually scoring well this year. So that'd be the best thing to do. Like if I had Hutchison, I could have just done that. Uh, yeah, Cleary out, Hutchison up and brought in uh, Valentine Holmes in one move instead of had to do three. I mean, I've had to do three anyway because I wanted some other point scoring, uh, well, money-making credentials, but... If you do have Hutchison, that is the best trade option this week. If you own Cleary and you have Hutchison, you move Cleary out, Hutchison up, and bring in a center wing of your choice. Valentine Holmes is looming as the best option. I think he will be the highest scoring one this year, which is a shame because I owned him from the start last year. I was big on him again this year. I just, 
I was hoping he was a bit lower price. He ended up at finishing the season suspended last year. I know because I had him for all those suspensions. I even captained him on the games that he went out and got sent off. So that was good. Um, but I was hoping he started a bit cheaper this year and I would have ran with him. Shame. Any, anyhow, I didn't do it. I'm going to bring him in now. If you don't have Al Holmes, that's an option there. I think he's the best option. However, center wing is so versatile and there are so many players. So trust your gut. If you have a feeling on a player, go for them. I think that's the best thing here. There's, there's so many guns that you can go for. Regardless, I'm going to go Valentine Holmes. But in terms of the best trade-out options, if you've got Brandon Piacora, I think he has to go. He hasn't hit those heights that we needed. It's been unfortunate. A lot of it isn't even Piacora's fault. It's just unlucky. He had knock in first game, first minute of the round in round one. Went off for a head knock last week again, I think. And then this week he's out with an ankle injury. It's just been tough. But part ways with him, he's still above that 400k. You can move him on to something. Someone like Kai Pierce Paul, he's a good option this week. I was planning to do it myself. Uh, I want to give Pierce Paul one more look at just to make sure. Because if he has a poor game, if he misses a few tackles, then there's every chance he gets dropped again. And Dylan Lucas comes into this squad. In saying that, as I said, you can bring him in this week. Not a bad shout. So Pia Cora to someone like Kai Pierce Paul is not a bad shout. There's not really many guns in the second row that are tearing it up. Obviously, Fafita's been out. Britton Nikra, who's one of the best, is uh, suspended, and he's going to drop cash when he comes back regardless. Um, you can go your, your big lock forwards who are just basing 70. Like Isaiah Yo has been fantastic to start this season. I don't hate Isaiah Yo as a pickup at all. Paddy Carrigan, I think in um, Payne Haas's absence, he's a good shout, but... Again, there's no attacking stats in Paddy Carrigan. It's all base, so it depends what you want to do there. You can go pods. Like, I really still want Jaden Sewer. I'm going to give it a week or two, and I want to bring him into here and get rid of Firmo or something, but that's down the track. I don't know. Second row is a tough one, so I think going for someone like Kai Pierce Poor to free up a little bit of cash and jump on him where he goes up in price, and then later you can flick him on or keep him. Who knows how he'll play. So Pierre Cora has to be an out. Kai Pierce Paul's your best trade in. Um, other trade outs. Look, if you've avoided all these injuries, you can still look to trade out Hines. But now I just don't think there's many options at halfback regardless. So it's a tough one. But Hines going to drop more cash again, expectedly. Has the buy next week. He's not a bad trade out target. But all this depends on if you've avoided these injuries. I've been pretty okay with it. Like I just, I got the Cleary one. That's big. That's tough. I've got Pierre Cora. There's two of my trades. I've, I'm boosting this week regardless because I didn't do it last week. This is my first boost of the year. But there's two trades just from injuries. And then my last, oh, my last was Tane Picky. There's three trades, all just injured players. That's just how, how it goes. If you somehow avoided these, lucky you, you can hold trades or you can jump on some other ones. I'd be using this round as another round to solidify uh, money making. As I said, I was going to do. I just want to make sure that's recording again. Yeah, um, as I said, I was going to do Liam Henry, not a bad shout-out front row. Depends how if you really want to be using trades in your front row position. But Henry scored 52 last week at 200, and I think he's about 280 now. So there's a bit of money-making left in him, a fair bit of money-making, to be honest, if he keeps scoring the way he has been. But also can be a playable option. Like he is scoring more than Tavita Totola and Tavita Totola is 430k. I'd love to be owning him. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to miss him. After this price rise, I don't think there's too much value in getting on him unless he scores 70 and his break even is ridiculously low. You can get on play players like Liam Henry. You can get on Finafuiaki. He scored 57 or 59 with a try last week. Not the greatest score, but at his price point and, you know, the fact that he's playing in a Cowboys team – playing 60, 65 minutes at second row. he will. Those attacking stats will come. So I don't mind Finafuyaki if you wanted to do that. I might look to do him next week as well. We'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd look to solidify point scoring for one more round. Uh, not point scoring, po money making for one more round. And then next week, jump on point scoring. Uh, I'm doing a bit of that. I'm doing it a bit the opposite way in this week. I've got in one money maker, Lockie Galvin. He has to be the most purchased this year. If you don't have, uh, not this year, this round, if you don't have Lockie Galvin, get him in. I think most of us are all blessed with Ethan Strange in our uh, five eighth position. 
So move him to down to center wing, drop someone, make money on them and bring in Galvin. Averaging 60.5 across his two games as an 18-year-old. He's making money. Who knows? He could be a playable option in a couple of weeks. He's he's looked at so far. You need Lockie Galvin in to make that money. Easiest way is, yeah, Ethan Strange down in your center wing, Galvin in. I think those are your best ways this week. So I have got some money making in the form of Galvin. I've got Brooks this week. He'd probably make a little bit more cash. He's got a break even of 36 at the moment. And they've got the Dragons. And, of course, I've got Val in. It's not so much for this week against the Broncos, though. He could go big. It's more so next week against the Titans, who I have loved. Sold all my stocks on the Titans. They're a basket case. Um, But that sort of wraps it up. Let's have a look at some of the most traded in. Ah, there's one. Apposite Coruscant. Now, I do not begrudge anyone going Appy. If you have a a sort of mid-range hooker like me, Brendan Smith to him, not a bad shout at all. I would do it if I didn't have the million other issues and injuries in my side. Would I do Joey, excuse me, would I do Joey Lusick or Danny Levi to him if you had them? Danny Levi, yes. I don't see too much money more to be made in Danny Levi. Joey Lusick's a hard one. I think that's up to you guys. If you guys want to do that move, trust your gut. Personally, I wouldn't. I think Joey lussick has got more money-making credentials in him. I'm just going to ride that, ride that, and eventually I'll sell him to someone like Harry Grant. But if you wanted to do that, if you trust Appy Coruscant, nothing wrong with that. Appy seemingly looks like number two best hooker this year. He could even be number one. Obviously, Harry started slow. Storm are on the buy this week anyway, so we... Uh, yeah, Storm are on the buy. Regardless, um... Yeah, if you wanted to do Joey Lusick to Opie, Opie Coruscant, I, I won't begrudge you. I'm not going to do it. A, I don't have the trades or money to do it, but I wouldn't do it personally. That's just my opinion, though. That's not coming from a expert opinion. It's just my stance on it, just what I is, um, I'm going to do personally. Brandon Smith, if you have someone like him, yeah, I don't mind that. If you wanted to move Smith up to him. If you're running any other hookers like Reese Robson, I wouldn't. I think Robson's going to score enough and you can hold him. He'll score well enough that eventually you can flip him to Harry Grant. He will also be a pot option because everybody's going to go Appy Coruscant. So it'll be just a, yeah, a bit of a point of difference having someone like Robson. In terms of other hookers, there really aren't many that people should have. If you have Damian Cook, get rid of him. Go to Appy Coruscant. If you have Reed Marnie, though I don't think many people do, I'd go to Appy Coruscant. And looking across the rest of the team, nobody should own any other hookers. If you have Wade Egan, at this point, you bloody hold because you've held him too long. Um, but yeah, Appy Coruscant, if you can go, if you can do Danny Levi to him, that is the best trade. Um, if not, you can skip him. You don't, you don't need him. He's going to be, he's, he might hurt you. Obviously he scored 105 last round, but he played ex- exceptional and he scored 105. 100, yeah, it hurts not to have. But can he play better than that? And can he score better than that? Not quite sure. Uh, but yeah, he's one of the best trade in targets if you want to go in that hooker position. Hooker, again, it's a bit of a shit fight. So if you want to just lock and load early and get a gun, I don't begrudge you for doing that. Not a bad shout. Fenor Blake, he's looking to be traded in. He's got a break even of 91. So I don't know why people are doing it so quick. Maybe it's because they owned Tino. Maybe it's because they owned Payne Haas. Both of them are out now, and the only other gun uh, front row forward is Adam Fenua Blake. I don't hate it. I think Fenua Blake at getting into your side doesn't really matter about what time you get him in. You're going to hold him for the season. I would wait another week. I don't see him scoring 91 against the um, against the Knights, so you can wait a week to get him in and bring him in. But if, as I said, if it's because you're doing a injured swap between one of your other guns like Payne Haas and like Tino, move straight across to Adam. That's fine. Uh, Dominic Young, he's the next most traded in, minus 15 break even. He's got 150 last week. I don't hate the shout of getting him in. He looks phenomenal in the Roosters. Like last week was the best game I've seen him play, period. Obviously, he might not score as many tries as he did for the Knights last year, but every chance he does. But just by the look of the other facets of his game, he's going to be coming up with more things. It's not so much just scoring tries that Dominic Young does to get points. He had 12 or 14 tackle breaks last week, which is, that's a shit ton of points that you get there. He had a try assist. Like, I don't mind getting him in, especially if you're doing the same sort of thing. You're selling Cleary, you're moving Hutchison out. You can get Dominic Young in easily. You can even bank cash because Cleary's 200K more expensive. 
Uh, getting the hammer in, I don't hate that. Break even a one, so he's expected to go up in price again. He's looked pretty good. Uh, they've got the the Dolphins this week. Uh, no, they are the Dolphins. They've got the Titans this week, so he could score a thousand. Don't mind that. And Kai Pierce Paul is the other most traded in that is not in my team. Again, don't hate that this week. I would look to do it. I'm not going to do it this week, but I am going to look to do it next week if he performs well. In terms of most traded out, the players in my team are Trebojevic, as in Ben Trebojevic. Wouldn't be trading him. I'd give him at least another week. Um, I think he could go well against the Dragons. In fact, I'm even playing him. People trading out Ethan Strange is ridiculous to me. He's still got a minus nine break even. It's only 1.2% of players, but even that's a lot. He's still got money to be made. You, to bring in Galvin, you move him down to center wing and then you bring in Galvin. You should not be trading out Strange. Taylor May, he's got a 54 break even. He's actually expected to lose cash now. I'm not going to trade him out just yet. Uh, obviously, you know, the Panthers, they just favored the right-hand side last week because they, they identified a weakness, not because of necessarily that's what they're going to do every week. I still see Taylor May as a good option. He could be a hold for a while longer. I want to get him to around that 500K mark, and then I'll flip him uh, to a gun later on. Hines, of course, another one of the most sold. Only 0.8% of players, but I don't hate that. If you've, if you've avoided all injuries in your side, it's not a bad shout. And Viliami Fafita, I don't hate that as well because he's a bit of a nightmare. He's not. You don't have to do it this week because he's not going to play and he's not going to hurt you. Um, but if you can turn him into a money making player, that's a good shout. If you can, turn, if he's in your front row and you can turn him into Liam Henry, do it. Uh, if he's in your second row and you can turn him into Kaipius Paul or Finafuiaki, do that as well. But again, this is all luxuries if you avoided all of the injuries. Focus on your injured players. Focus on your more expensive players. You can't hold Cleary if you own Hines. It's going to be a nightmare. And even if you don't own Hines, you own another halfback, you can probably hold Cleary. But that's a lot of money that you're going to be sitting on your bench that you could use to bolster the rest of your team. So I'm going to sell Cleary this week. I'll bring him back when he's uninjured. I don't care where that is. It's probably going to be after he's by. But I'll look to do that then. Uh, but that is all for the... The trade uh, trade talk segment. Sorry, once again, a few issues with the recording software. Uh, but we will get into our sit B starts. Re well, realistically, my sit V starts. So looking in my team here, in terms of bench players I want to play, it's a, it's a tough old week. I think Ethan Strange against the Sharks is a no, but Jack Bostock against the Titans is a yes. James Tedesco, who have they got? They've got Panthers in round one. I'm going to sub him in and VC him. Mm, yes, I'm going to VC him and Captain Holmes. But we'll get into the captains later. <laughs> Either way, Tedesco, Ponga, they're both playing for me. Bostock is one of my reserves. Hines will play, but Brooks will be one of my reserves. And then my final reserve, I got options out of Jesse Arthurs against the Cowboys. Morgan Smithies against, doesn't matter, he's against the Sharks, but he's going to score exactly what he scores every week regardless. And I've got Joey Lusick against the Tigers. I oh, Or I can go Lachlan Galvin against the Eels. Based on Galvin's how, how he's been playing, I don't hate that as a shout. I think I'm actually going to throw it on Lusick again. He could cross over. Regardless, he's still got that around that 40 in base, so it's a pretty solid floor for him. But those are my sit be start options for this week. If you have other ones, like if you've got Drew Hutchison this week and he's not your starting halfback, I don't hate him against the Bunnies. As I said, I'm quite worried about the Bunnies. Drew Hutchison looked good last week. He could score you some points. So if you want to play him as a reserve, that's not a bad shout. Again, if you have Lachlan Galvin, which I hope all of you do by this week, trade him in ASAP. You can play him. Uh, ben Trebojevic, he's in my starting side. In terms of sit starts, obviously he's a start for me. I just think against that dragon side, he can go over for some points. And if not, I expect his base to be more than 19 for this game. Uh, other players like Totola, I mean, I don't have options in the front row, but if you have someone like Liam Henry, I'd start them as well. It looks like he's going to be locked in for 50 points regardless each week. And that's pretty good. If you're not even starting him on your bench, you could even start him as a starting front rower. So there's an option there for your sit B starts. Now we will finish off with the captain options in this one. In terms of this week, it's pretty hard. 
I think the absolute clear cut choice is Tom Trebojevic against the against the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I think if you've got the luxury of having Trebojevic, do that and you don't think twice. I don't have Trebojevic. So it's a lot harder for me. And if you're in that boat where you don't own Trebojevic, if you're in my boat, let, let's discuss. Let's let's talk about how to limit the damage and try and not get absolutely killed by him this week. So as you can see with what I've done, I've got the VC on Tedesco. I think Panthers without Cleary will be obviously a little bit weakened. And just the way Tedesco and the Roosters have been playing, I don't mind that as a shout. I've got the C on Valentine Holmes. They do versus the Broncos, so it's going to be a tough old game. Ooh, hang on. I'm going to switch up. All right. I'm going to VC... I am still going to VC Tedesco. I'm going to captain Roger Tuovasa Shek as a point of difference. Tuovasa Shek named at fullback against the Knights in at home, so in New Zealand. I like that, and it's going to be point of difference. No one else is going to bloody do it. So if you've got Roger Tuovasa Shek and you want to be different like me, do that. If not, if you want your safer options. I don't mind Heinz again. I've said it every week, and yet somehow I've not done it once. I think it's going to be tough. I think the Canberra Raiders, I'm actually going to tip them, I think. I think their forward pack against this decimated Sharks one will get get over them. But I think Hines in general is going to have a bit of a personal vendetta to improve. Played his worst game in a long, long time. Maybe his worst game ever last week. He's going to want to improve. He's going to try and put on a show. So I don't mind him uh, against the Raiders. He's also a late game. So you can put the C on him and have a VC crack at someone else. As I said, Tedesco is going to be my VC, so I really like Tedesco against the Panthers. It's a weird saying, I know, but Panthers without Cleary and just with how good the Roosters look, I don't hate that at all. If you do have Valentine Holmes, I don't mind him as a VC as well. Against the Broncos, could be hard, but Valentine manages to score points even in these poor games. If you have Latrell Mitchell, I don't mind him as a VC. They versus the Bulldogs and the, Ra uh, the Rabbitohs have looked really bad, but... Maybe this is the chance for them to prove that they actually are a contender and Latrell could put on a big score. So Latrell Mitchell against the Bulldogs, not a bad VC option, but only VC option. Looking across everything else, there's not much else left. I don't really want to do a Parramatta player. You could do Deal Brown against the Tigers, but not really my forte. Regardless, if you own Tom Trebojevic, there is no options. I don't care. If your VC scores 100, don't even do it you just captain Trebojevic and you don't even have to watch a game this week I think you'll be fine I'm just very scared of that game I'm very scared as a non-owner owner. and if as I said if you are a non-owner like me we're just gonna have to cross our fingers and toes and hope for the best but yeah Trebojevic clear-cut captain option this week it's gonna be tough as a non-owner but we'll just have to join us if you're one of those like me let's just Let's just do it. We're in this together. We have to hope and pray that he doesn't go too big. But that's it for the uh, captain op options, really. If you have any other questions, any other options, as I said, flick me a DM at Chip and Chase on Instagram. Best way to talk to me, best way to interact with me is through there. We can talk anything, super coach, whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, flip me a DM there, ask me any questions, captain options, trade options, whatever you want there. Obviously, when I talk about trade options and captain options, a, a lot of it comes from what I'm looking at, which is my my own team. So there's going to be stuff out there that I don't have, players I don't own. Like, for instance, Scott Drinkwater against the Broncos. If you own Scott Drinkwater, not a bad shout. Probably what I would VC him. But also, if you own Scott Drinkwater and Tom Trebojevic, you can't VC Drinkwater because you have Trebojevic and you have to captain Trebojevic. I don't even think Trebojevic is a VC play. If you own Tom Trebojevic, it's captain. That's it. Um, regardless, I think that'll sort of do us for this one, actually. So I will thank you guys for, for tuning into this one. Once again, plug the Instagram. If you're not following me on there, go follow me at Chip and Chase on Instagram. Got a lot more content coming. Working on some super coach content that, again, won't necessarily be put into these podcasts. But if you want to interact with that, if you want to engage with that, head over to the uh, Instagram there. And as I said, if you want to interact with me, that's the best place to do it. If you are listening as a audio listener, if you've gotten this far, once again, if you want to see any of the visual aspect, if you want to see me, if you want to see my team and everything, how I'm going, 
head over to YouTube. That's the best place to watch that. Uh, but that's all I've got for this one. We'll be back again with some more podcasts. The preview podcast will be underway soon. And we'll be back again next week to see how we go. So thank you guys for tuning into this one. And I'll see you guys next time.